All right, so moving over to the Gundam Asha Origins alteration for you guys over here. So in terms of this unit, um, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed in overall because uh, this is going to be our third installment of a seven star melee type, you know, build with a uh, tech attribute. So that, that is definitely something we, we don't really need at this point in time because like what we really need, uh, we need a lot of P attributes to just kind of balance things out over here. So we right now have up to three tech attributes. So we got the Ashma Origin over here as well as um, the tech attribute Enhanced the Moseda, Big Scale version, and then we had the Barbaric. So uh, in terms of this overall unit, I think they definitely start things out right with the head part right off the bat. So we can just kind of take a look. We do have uh, up to eight parts we're looking at. Um, so there's definitely going to be some really good parts and there's just not some good um, kind of subpar parts we're looking at. But the head part is definitely something that is outshining all of the other ones so far. I don't see any of the current seven star parts having this good of a part trait. So, I mean, you can kind of argue the Cold Sora is definitely up there because it's actually going to be offering some, you know, in industry charge boosting. But I did talk about that one is not really that good of a, it's going to be like a really, really niche build that you're going for. You're going for like a generic um, high fire power and close combat build for that one because you are pretty much locked down to those two specific attacks. So that's why I did kind of say they're not that good. But in terms of the Ashmoth or Argent head over here, I think this one, they did a pretty good job with this one over here. Definitely really good. So this one's to start things off, uh, it's going to have the regular, um, the perfect, you can say, tech with this one over here. Um, pro tag in close combat, definitely one of the top two tech you can be looking at on a melee build. So that is definitely going to be a good um, start right, right there already. In terms of the overall part trade, so this is going to be our next 40% uh, trade for our head parts over here. And this one's going to be a lot more better than the previous two installment that we have. So the previous two that we have, uh, way back was uh, let me actually show you guys real quick. So they are actually going to be the Gion Altron's head as well as fencing in them. Me personally, I cannot really benefit them from that much because of the fact that they are basically locking, locking down to using a what? These are basically locking you down to using a um, in fighter over here. So that is not really going to be beneficial for anyone using an out fighter. Me personally, so I can't really use that. Uh, we also do have. Um, where's the other one? I believe it's down here. Um, where's it at? Can't find it. All right, right here. So this one is also boosting in fighter as well, which is like, come on, man. Like, why? I don't know why they made both of them in fighters. Like, where's my in fighter at? Um, the next one you can be looking at is uh, definitely gonna be the Helio, which I feel like at this point in time is probably not the best headpiece to look at because of the HP restriction is extremely uh, <laughs> kind of wild having it at 90%. So. This one, I will have to say, this is like if you're talking about specifically 40% straight head, this is definitely you can say the worst one to look at um, because this one, while this one can be used in both build, but I personally feel like the HP restriction is a little bit too much on this one. Uh, War tag wise, is uh, not really that um, beneficial for both build either. Um, so yeah, that's why I would have to say in terms of this one, this one is a. Uh, being generous you know offering a non-conditional um not really non-conditional but this one having an easy restriction definitely makes makes any build a lot more easier this one should you be using a pro tag so that is definitely fine uh in terms of the overall head um the defensive value is actually slightly lower uh than just any of the other one but it's still yield one of the higher stats because of the raw melee attack is actually pretty high so not bad uh, you can definitely see that the resistance for this one is actually pretty high as well <laughs> not bad so pretty good uh nothing to complain on that one right there moving on to the torso uh, what do we have over here so in terms of the torso um this is going to be one of those portraits that maybe a lot of people will like because this one is offering a exq reduced by 23 percent on a melee build over here so close combat so this is definitely going to be um something you can kind of take advantage of if you are planning to build like a um, cooldown reduction type build but do keep that in mind in terms of um trying to level up your portrait for limited time suit they are going to be extremely hard just trying to get them up to like a you know, at least like an exq or a part trail level 10. so that's why generally if i if i'm talking about um exq cooldown reduction trait 
I mainly recommend people getting, let's say, um, the standard part because with those uh, four star pick tickets, you guys can definitely get um, 12 copies, just enough to get um, to the max, so level uh, 20%. So, generally, what they have been releasing so far, they've been adding three more percent. So, the, so that's um, slightly alleviate um, the anti EXQ uh, crew down reduction trade. So, I mean, it's not really like the biggest difference having three percent. But if you do consider all the other uh, slot uh, slot that can be available, I believe right now we have one for Lake. I don't I don't recall having one for Arm yet. So uh, we have one for now Body. We have one for the Legs. We have one for the Backpack. We have one for the Melee Weapon. So you are looking at roughly about 12 more percentage than um, the normal. So that's actually quite powerful if you do consider more adding on later on. But I do say that 20% just having a max out 100% should be able to get you through most of your event if you purely want to spam EXQ. So I feel like having a 23% is a little bit overkilling it, but I, I do get uh, the reason why they're doing that because to just kind of alleviate the problem that you might find uh, if you're facing off, you know, enemy lineup that might have, you know, um, those anti cooldown reduction trait. But overall, this is definitely something you can invest into if you don't mind uh, spending your growth hanger slot into that. So in terms of overall stat, you know, this one, like, I'm just looking at the resistance, like I'm kind of shook, you know, this one is actually really high, like 3k as well as uh, both of them is actually literally 3k, like not even kidding. So that's actually really good. Um, you can also find that the shot defense is not too shabby at all. Uh, melee defense, you can say, is probably on the lower end tier. Like I'm pretty sure, I think most of the other, of the other one are maybe a rough, uh, about 7k ish. But you can kind of um, ignore that the fact that the melee or the the regular or the just the raw melee attack is actually pretty high, 7k. Or more is not really that high, so yeah, kind of kind of more so ever. But the tag wise is definitely top notch. No complaints on that. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, moving on to the arm. So in terms of overall arm, I'm not really I'm, I'm not really really gonna talk too much about this one. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys do know me. Um, when I talk about the arm, that's uh, arm plus the AWP issue. I usually don't rate them the same as how I would for the other ones because of the fact that if you are gonna put this on your main slot, you would completely lose out the ability to do any sub slot for your shield or just having a shield slot to be uh, to begin with. So that's why it's not that good. Um, you might sit here and think, but look at but look at the overall stat you're getting. You're getting a uh, what a twenty one thousand at max over here, and then a thirteen point two k melee defense over here. But do you, you got to keep in mind um, as you go up in in terms of your overall stat. Um, let's say you have a flat out eighty thousand, for example, right? If you're not getting if you're not getting any percentage boosting, that is literally gonna drag like that's gonna drag you down in terms of how many power like how much power you can literally output. So I don't really take too much into consideration of like uh, what kind of like flash that we can be looking at. Um, I, I generally care about what kind of part trait we can be getting. So that's literally how you can do more damage. Like you can you, you can literally equip this arm and you can still do zero damage just because of the fact that. Uh, for once, you're not getting any power boosting, so it's simple as that. Um, but um, I will not discount the fact that you can put this one as a sub side, and you should still be able to receive a good, a good chunk of you know um, staff bonus over here. And uh, one thing to note, if you are gonna put this as a, as a sub slot, uh, whatever the um, whatever the rate that is transferred to the main parts, um, it's gonna it's gonna get cut by half first, and then um, whatever percentage you can get transferred over, uh, that's what you pretty much have. So. Um, in terms of this one, I would have to say it's a pretty healthy part over here with a 21,000 melee attack. Um, even cutting that by half, you should still be looking at roughly about 11k or just roughly about 10k-ish as a transfer. So it's still not pretty bad, you know. Yeah, but uh, definitely not going to be something you want to use on a main slot for sure. Great Vortex that again, um, was the Pro Tech in close combat, definitely the best pairing over here. In terms of this uh, EXK over here, the Gamma Nano uh, Lamry Story over here. So I think people, when they were using it, I think what they complain about is this one is not having like, so this one having an S power is definitely really great. Definitely something a lot of people might want to use, but um, this is not actually a full on custom EXQ. So when you do activate that, if you have like a swarm of enemy, you are gonna get attacked and you're gonna take a lot of damage and you will die. So <laughs> that is probably not something you guys would like to see. But in terms of overall effects that they're giving out, it's actually quite interesting. So this one, you will, um, your Gunpla um, resists flinching for a set period of time. So that's probably like a few seconds. But uh, the new line over here, it raises debuffs, what is it? 
um, erases debuff effects on your Gunpla. So this is actually quite an interesting statement that they have included over here. So you can literally remove any like, let's say your enemy have EX skill that can debuff you. For example, um, lower your attack, just basically lowering your offensive and defensive values. That's, so that's actually a pretty good gimmick over here. So, um, but but to me personally, I don't see why they want to include something like that because in terms of overall gameplay, it's a really passive. I wouldn't, even if you do get um, power reduced or um, your defense get reduced or whatsoever, I don't see any big changes to it. So I'm not sure why they're suddenly adding these types of effects, but uh, it's, it's still good. Uh, I, I do like the fact that they are going out and um, trying out new things over here, adding in new effects. So maybe eventually we might have events that will probably debuff you and you can't really do any much like you, you, you can't you can't really output a lot of good damage and then maybe this one is going to be like a way or the ex skill to just kind of um remove all those debuffs over here so it's definitely a great changes i guess you know for them to add a new stuff but uh in terms of overall effectiveness i to this current like currently i don't see uh this being like important effects right there but you know uh, just keep that in mind if you are going to use this ex skill be prepared to get get hit get your ex skill cancelled because this is just a regular ex skill um not not really bindable but it does have a pretty good short um cutscene like the cutscene cinematic but not really like the actual cutscene where you don't take damage so kind of um definitely something to kind of keep that in mind uh moving on to the leg so the leg was uh, pretty good I don't believe I actually saw the EX good animation, so I can't complain or I comment too much on that right now. But this one is uh, looking pretty good, actually. Like, you're looking at a double um, A minus pierce to power, so that's actually really good. I did not pull it, so I'm assuming, right? I'm assuming it should be somewhere around B power uh, prior to alteration, which is going to be powerful enough. If this one is looking at a C power prior to alteration, yes, you will have to alter it to use it to just kind of gain that um, A a uh, power uh, modifier right there but uh in terms of whoops let me move over to the leg tab over here in terms of the overall legs um it's actually still pretty good you know uh i think the war tag wise is definitely something we love to see pro tech and high fire power so that is definitely something really good um in terms of overall stat i, I think this one is definitely a slightly dropping in a while if i can i even say that <laughs> um comp like just look at it chart. i don't think it drops that much in value but you know the leg being at 5k is eh, 5k defense is kind of okay i guess but man like the shot attack or the shot defense is still up there as well so not bad actually um the overall flat out like the raw mail attack is not too bad either so that will secure itself at third place currently so it's not bad actually um but if you guys do let's say but if you guys do have, let's say, what is it, um, the double, the enhanced double state leg up here, I think this one literally replaces this one because that one is literally the same war tag, uh, but that one actually has a 40% trait um, leg over there. But but here's the catch. If you, let's say we do have both the legs, for example, all trait, the big scale, uh, double enhanced data, put that one on the main slide and then subslide this one as the, subslide this one and you can gain up to a 40% um subside bonuses because they both have a same war tag so that's going to be 20.5 percent and you also do have to consider the scale differences of a 20 percent so bam that is literally going to be the best combo you can be looking at so that's actually quite nice so uh just a little bit of a um, kind of how you can build around kind of build around it if you guys do have both the legs over here so yeah that is uh, something i just kind of noticed right now they both have the same war tag nice <laughs> actually really good so yeah, if you are able to put the leg, you can definitely work on towards that um, type of build. I think that would be actually pretty good. I don't have the leg personally, so I can't really try that out. Uh, definitely would love to see that. So, but yeah, uh, the leg wise, not not too shabby, I guess, you know, for the stat purposes of, over here. But yeah, um, but you know, if you just target purely for the EXQ, you don't need to all treat it because P, B power, B plus power, I think should be sufficient already. But you know what? I'm going to check it out now. <laughs> Because I don't trust myself because I think I didn't really take a look to see what kind of power we're looking at. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take a look now. So what is it? Okay, so oh it's looking at A minus already, so you don't really have to alter it. Yeah, actually, yeah. Okay. Uh I think the only gain you, you, you're getting from that like EX skill is the piercing. And I don't see piercing being that 
all that like i feel like having a d pierce should be good already it's not like having like a high piercing rate will allow you to do more damage you can definitely break through enemy defense but yeah that's pretty much it you're not really gonna do like uh um, x amount more damage so yeah so i feel like an archery version is uh, definitely good already so moving on to the backpack so we actually do have a part tree for this one so let's see how good the part tree can be uh, moving on to the back slot over here, so something that is not included in here is actually going to be the close backpack because there isn't a backpack. So, um, in terms of this one, is uh, this one is definitely on the low end tier, not really that low compared to the like you're only about 400 like stat differences, so it's not really that big. And this one having a portrait is definitely going to be a lot more better than those that don't, per se. But uh, definitely going to be losing out to, let's say, the um, do you Raven, obviously. That one has a 40% trait. And uh, even maybe losing to Barbaric because that one has a um, EX Kakuda reduction trait right there. So that is definitely something people would want to kind of use. Um, in terms of overall part trait, yeah, this one, I got to say, is definitely dropping the ball because this one is actually giving you an EX piercing boosting. So it's probably not the best trait you, you want, but... Um, I do have to say, if there's any event that has, let's say, incredibly high defense uh, value, uh, having a few of these uh, EXQ piercing will allow you to do do more damage in conjunction with EXQ that might bring in uh, a piercing like the late EXQ. So it's not a bad combo per se, uh, but just probably not something I think majority of the player needs. So, um, so this is probably going to be something you can just kind of skip. I would have to say because you're not you, you're kind of wasting a slot already. So why bother with this one over here? Um, in terms of overall stat, now look at it, um, the defensive for the shot is still up there, so that's uh, quite a surprise as well. Um, in terms of the overall resistance value, they are pretty high as well, but I don't think they're high enough to the point where you want to use them on the respective, let's say, uh, physical resistant arena or let's say beam resistant arena for either or. So, uh, But they're definitely great sets of number there, so that is uh, definitely something to just kind of uh, take notes right there as well. But overall, armor wise is uh, to, to look at it. Not too bad as well, but a uh, great warsack set again. Protect and a uh, um, high mobility or protect and high firepower definitely to warsack to kind of have. So, all right, moving on from that. Oh, they actually do have the same warsack um, compared to the um, G Raven as well. So, yeah, they're definitely pumping out a lot of protect unit lately. So that is actually quite good. Quite good. All right, moving on to some of the mainly weapon trees over here. I think they're probably the most let down portion of it. All right, moving on to the melee weapons over here. You guys can definitely see that it's actually among the higher rankings over here. Uh, this one is coming out at a flat um, 17,000 over here. So that's actually pretty good. But um, it's actually going to be losing on to the um, enhanced level Zeta melee weapon already. So this one is coming in at 17.3k over here. So this one is definitely being the better one. Oh, I will have to say because you can definitely do a, a lot more better um sub slotting over here but play over here i do have a little bit of a concern like just talking about the double enhanced state over here but uh this one being a saber category category definitely makes things a lot more easier for sub side purposes over here but in terms of overall portrait yeah this is where we're, we're going to start seeing some problems over here because uh they definitely cannot pack every you know every uh, weapon tree or every part tree with those 40 percent trait uh, parts over here so that's why uh giving this one a regular 30 slash 35 percent is actually not something i would even invest in anymore because we currently do have a few um namely we have the cold sword beam saber so that one hasn't having a 40 percent trait is immediately the one you want to be getting um this, this one is uh, having a little bit of a higher uh, melee attack already so if you are planning to kind of work on like yeah, on a melee build and you want to be asking what is going to be a really good melee weapon for my melee build um i will have to suggest you know simply suggest the, the cold sword beam saber just because this one is um, definitely the better combo just you know this, this one being a saber category as well so for your sub -star option definitely going to be tons of there for you know big scales and whatnot um other than that all the other ones are just kind of like yeah not really up there or no never mind this one yeah, we just talked about this one uh, earlier. So this one, I call this one probably definitely one of the best one. Even even better than this one because of the buff EXO effects. So I kind of explained that already. But uh, let me do explain the downside of this one. So if you are going to be using three EXQ with no additional effects. So let's say you are using EXQ like these over here. <laughs> Guess what? You don't want to be using this kind of part tree over here because you're not going to be benefiting from the buff EXQ effects because there's literally no effects on uh, attached on over here. So 
that is going to be the only downside you're looking at but in terms of the overall positivity uh it's really positive for this one over here so just other, other than using ex skill that has no effects like this one over here or this one over here um generally i will have to say this one beats any of the other one that is uh, on this list over here but uh if you talk about raw power boosting definitely go for this one if you're talking about a little bit more juice to it a little bit more output definitely go for this one instead so this one sorry this one is not making a cut so but in terms of but in terms of aesthetics a bit uh the beam saver for this one the nano uh lemonade sword this one definitely is really cool uh because there's actually a few patterns or a few like circuit lines that runs across the source so that's why i think this one definitely makes a really unique um sword um just for the aesthetic just with the overall uh, looks of it so definitely really good for the setup side but in terms of the like the practicality how usable it can be or how powerful that can be probably not up there anymore all right so moving on to the slush hammer over here so they actually make this one into a axe category so that's not gonna be too good actually because if you, if you guys do take a look at the generally um weapon category over here they're either last saber blade or even do a saber for by, by some chance over here uh, we do have some big scale subslot option for a axe category, so that's not something to just kind of worry about. But in terms of overall portrait, I think this one is uh, even worse than the last one because this one is locking to only a uh, physical type EX skill, while this one is locking to a late EX skill. So, not going to be the best option to invest into, so probably going to be a hot skill for sure. Just no no. But alright, moving on to the last thing to go over is going to be the shotgun. So, they. <laughs> So shotgun is a long rifle category, huh? So this shotgun must be really long because like they they had the audacity to put this into a long uh, long rifle category. So so for your sub slot option is yeah you're not you're not gonna be looking the best on this one specifically. So kind of fortunate. Um, but in terms of this one over here, I don't think there's much to just talk about for this one specifically uh, because of the fact that this one. Um, wait a minute, why is this one not included? Oh, duh, this one does not even have any melee attack, so that's why it's not included. So, uh, in terms of this one, I don't think there's any, I, I don't think you need to alter this one because uh, this one is having like an enemy um, shooting power reduced right there. So, not gonna be like a generally run trade for like the majority of the player, uh, unless you know, unless you are, unless you are someone that is building like a, um, like a all like um, enemy power reduction type trait then these uh these is going to be a lot more beneficial to you but if you just casually building like a power type reduction or just a regular power boosting then having like a reduction trade there is not going to be too beneficial so um just having one is not going to allow you to tank that much anyway so if you can't really like get over that if you if you're not really building like a cooldown or excuse me if you're not building like a all power reduction trade builds then uh, having these right here is just going to be like a Kind of like a dead trade to be honest so yeah probably not going to be the best investment to this one as well but overall i think the overall staff with the astral um, origin over here is not too bad you know there's definitely some few uh, good pickup parts over here you know especially the head that one's definitely going to be the best pickup uh maybe the torso i i personally feel like the, the um what is it the head and the torso is definitely the top two picks and then the other two are just kind of like kind of option optional i guess you know uh depending on what kind of build you guys are looking at because the overall portrait does not really satisfy me in, 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 a, in a way that i will like uh, kind of alterate them the overall stat uh as they kind of come down to like the arm the legs and the backpack they kind of fall down a little bit so that's why the first two parts are probably going to be up for recommendation but you know with that being said that is going to be pretty much it with this alteration review over here and i'll catch you guys all on the next one